We're given a matrix P here, and then some V vectors, which I've put into a V matrix. And we're asked to find a basis U. So that way, we have this P that becomes U transforming into V. Now we know that the definition of P of U going to V is going to be equal to, uh, essentially you're going to put a U1 here, and then it's basis V, and then a U2 here, basis V, and then I guess we have a U3 here, basis V. So that way we could take our U's and transform them into V's. But we also know that we can rewrite this. We could say that if we take our V basises and then multiply it by that U1 with the V uh, basis, it's going to be equal to U1. And we could do that here as well with these. So we could say that V times this U2, the V basis is simply equal to U2, and V times that U3 with the V basis equals U3. From here, it's immediately obvious that we can sort of pack this up and say that V times this U1, U2, U3 is going to be equal to, well, with the sub V there, is equal to U1, U2, U3. But what is this U1, U2, U3 sub V really equal to? Well, it's actually equal to this P U going to V matrix. So we should rewrite this as V times P U going to V, and then that'll just be equal to this U1 or this U matrix. Now, it was nice of them to actually give us the whole V matrix and the whole P matrix. So all we have to do is really multiply these two matrices together, uh, although you want to do that in the right order. So you would have to set this up as sort of like the V matrix on this side, negative 5, negative 4, negative 9, 4, 6, 5, 2, 3, 7. And this problem was hell for me because I forgot that you got to put this P matrix on the right. So it would be 2, 3, negative 1, negative 3, negative 4, 0, 5, 6, 1. And then you can multiply these together to get the U. But um, I'm just going to use the calculator real quick. So this is actually just going to be equal to negative 43, 15, 30. And then we have negative 53, 18, 6, uh, that's 36. And then the final one is negative 4, 1, and 5. So these are kind of the answers for that U matrix down there. So this is what U equals. This is the U matrix. Well, in the next question, they're asking us to sort of rearrange this a little bit so that we could say that this uh, V going to W thing is just going to be sort of equal to, uh, you have to put the V in the inside, and then your W goes on that side. So you could sort of do that across the board. Again, here with the, another one of those. But what do we know this is equal to? We know it's equal to W times the V with sub w, which turns into a v. And if we were to call this one v1, and then sort of do that same thing for a v2, then you get some sort of an idea that w times the p v going to w matrix will be equal to the whole v uh, matrix that we have. Unfortunately, right here, it looks like the only way we can solve this is by multiplying both sides by the right by the inverse of the P. So that way it would cancel out from this side and you basically get that the matrix W is gonna be equal to V, the matrix V there, times the matrix P of V going to W, but this has to be inverted. And if we try to solve that, then we can figure out what W is. But let's not go too crazy. We're just gonna plug this into a calculator. We'll take our whole matrix V, which is this one, and then we'll have to find the inverse of P which is that, but inverted. And then we're gonna be able to find W over here. And I'll just use the calculator, and that's just gonna be equal to 10, negative 12, negative 15, then we'd have a 10, negative 21, negative 24, and then a one, that's negative seven, and a negative eight. And so now we have the answers for the W here and the U here. You could see the two different ways we found it. 